A lap pull down is one of the best machines that you can add to your gym in terms of the number and quality of the exercises that you can do on them. They probably rate high up the totem, totem pole as far as what they deliver. But what makes them even better is that they take up relatively little space considering what they can do. So that's exactly what we're looking for in gym equipment. Now, the only issue is the price. Prior to COVID, you could get the previous version of the 700 series for around $900. Slowly, the price on that unit crept up. Now, I remember the day that it got to $1,200. It was a sad day and I was literally shitting my pants. The machine had not changed, but the price had gone up so much more for literally nothing. I left work that day, I was so depressed, thinking nobody would buy them. But luckily for me, the whole market was in the same boat. And in the end, the old LPL 720 eventually got to the $1,300 mark. Then along came the new LPL 700, which we now sell for $1,449. We used to sell the old weight stack version for around $1,600, $1,700. It got to over $2,000. Now the new LSW750 is $2,335. While these new lap machines may seem expensive, they're just really tracking the general inflation that we're seeing in everything these days. But the difference is that these new versions pack in some pretty impressive improvements, which I'm gonna walk through today. Now the build, put simply, these new ATX lap machines are the best in terms of quality, durability and performance. They've really leveled up. They showcase the new, the evolution of the design and the manufacturing processes that are, that are around these days. The old versions were highly regarded in the gym equipment communities. These versions have improved in, in, in many ways. For me, the standout visually would be the, the new laser cut header unit. The main upright and the, the housing for the guide rails both have a frame section, which you can't see. These laser panels are then bolted on and encase the whole unit along with the pulleys and their spaces that space the top section and the rest of the bolts are used for pulleys. It's a bit hard to see, but it's all very well laid out. In the previous model, it also featured a laser cut housing, but the sides were welded together and it was bolted at the top on a central point. And comparing both these designs to the older model, which was the LPL 680, that featured just a, an upper housing of a tube steel with some holes cut out and pulley housings welded in, very basic. The evolution just shows how ATX are making constant improvements. The addition of the, the cutout bar holder is just a real simple, but it just shows the advancement of how they used to do it in the old days. The guide rails are made from 20 mil solid steel bar. Previously, they were 25 mil hollow tube. So Dropping down the five mil has reduced resistance slightly. Now they are held in place by these nylon bushes. Both the older 600 and 700 series were bolted into place. This sometimes made assemblies a little bit difficult because sometimes you'd have trouble lining up the holes. But the main issue was that if you didn't quite get it properly aligned, the weight carriage or the header plate on a weight stack could feel sometimes sticky or get stuck. Um, when you first build it. With this setup, the carriage or the weight stack sort of self-center, now the carriage will just glide up and down with, with virtually no resistance and it's um, there's minimal drag and you really notice the difference. Now this is the same setup that is used on the Trinity Tower, which um, at the Home Gym Con in America, the Americans saw it for the first time and were blown away by that machine. The Trinity Tower is a thing of beauty. High quality components, you can easily switch between the different exercises, lap pull downs, low rows, and this lying back with your feet up row that I've never seen before. Now, both the weight carriage on the plate loaded version and the weight stack plates now feature channeled nylon bushes. They used to be solid round bushes. Once again, sliding reduction in resistance. So when you add them all together, that's how you get the, the improvements in um, smoothness. 
The main upright is made from 70 by 73 mil thick steel. It has two anchor points. The top one's for the plate loaded cable, the bottom one's for the weight stack cable. So if you want to convert your plate loader to weight stack later on, it's easy to do. The upright has a flat plate that's welded at the bottom where it's bolted to the upright. Then the whole structure is, as you can see, reinforced with these beefy backing plates, which also house the lower pulley. It is not until you sort of compare this arrangement to the previous models that you see just what an upgrade in terms of stability this new design is. Both at the top and the bottom, it's built for the heaviest loads and, and significantly improved. But wait, there's more for the structure. It's a minor detail, but the leg lock support is also tied into the frame now. It just adds more st stability. Previous models were just connected at the seat section. This, this new adaptation was made possible because the leg lock now operates in the ATX sleeve system. Before it was just a basic uh, metal on metal design. To do that, you need a precise fit. A little intolerance will mean that the, the leg lock will get stuck. So when you're welding the tube, sometimes there can be a, a deformity. That's why they couldn't add it on in the past. Like all ATX lap machines in the past and different to other ones, often cheaper ones, is that they're always built for decent range of motion to accommodate the big Germans and the Dutch, which are the tallest in the world. So I'm just over six foot and this machine dwarfs me. And another handy feature that they've done on this machine is they've brought the, the seat height up to 45 centimeters. So that's gonna be universal across your, your benches if you've got IPF spec benches. Now for range of motion, um, just to show you. Yeah, you'd have to be a, a dead set giant to uh, have any issues there. And that's one great feature of all ATX lap machines that they're built for bigger units. The other significant upgrade are the custom rubber feet, which you use when you're doing seated rows. The previous models just had some basic round tube. Look, it did the job, but the new custom feet just feel that bit better. Uh, finally, one of the best design features that I everyone should appreciate is in terms of the, the depth, it's actually the most compact out of the other versions if we exclude the, the foot plate. Without the foot plate, the machine is only 112 centimetres deep. That is a significant reduction when you compare it to the LPL 720, which was 144 centimetres. With the foot plate, the LPL, this model is 150 centimetres, but in a gym environment, you can still just easily walk over the steel um, plate or roll a bench over it without tripping or get the bench getting stuck. This reduction in footprint could be a massive bonus on any gym that's tight on space. And just to wrap it up, a good quality lap machine is an asset to any gym. You can just do so much on them. You know, we use them so, so many times and so many workouts for so many different things. Now the new generation ATX lap machines are more expensive, the most expensive they've been, but hopefully in this breakdown I've showed you that uh, there are some significant upgrades, so you do get some value from the, the price increase. You know, in a nutshell, this machine is the strongest and smoothest lap machine that ATX have made so far. You know, potentially it could actually save some people some space, which makes it even more valuable.